This video is intended to help those who have upgraded to the OpenTX 2.1 firmware uh, to help you set up telemetry. If you've previously had telemetry working and upgraded, you'll notice it stops working. So this is just a quick tutorial. Um, what I've done here is set up a model for each of my cell values. I have a ZMR250, which is the original, which is intended for 3S, and I have a ZMR250 uh, labeled 4S here, which was just copied from the original ZMR250. So to set up your um, to set up your cell voltage, what you're going to need to do is go search have the Tyrannus search for sensors. So you're going to hit page and you're going to go through to page 12 here. Oops, went too far. By the way, hold down page to go backwards. Okay, so you'll see uh, your normal telemetry is only showing your RSSI value and there's no other sensors uh, available because none have been found. So what we're going to need to do here is discover new sensors. To discover the new sensors, you're going to need to plug in a battery to, an, um, to your model and you'll be needing to arm the nays. The nays will not show new sensors until it's armed. Once it's armed, the telemetry data will then be picked up by the Tyrannus while it's searching. So I'm going to go ahead and pause this. I'm going to plug in my battery here because I'm not using a tripod. And uh, once we get that set up, I will show you how, to, how we can find the sensors and what it should look like. Okay, so we're discovering sensors. Let's see what we got. Now, <clears throat> we haven't armed the nays yet, but we can see we have values for all of the, for the RSSI and the other two values here. So when we arm the nays, we should see this screen populate. Whoa, there we go. So, okay, um, this is what you should see. Now you're getting all of the sensors that your Acro nays has available to it. So once that's done, the Tyrannus remembers what sensors are there. So the next step is instant. So your uh, voltage for your full pack here is there. So you can see it's 16.8. Now, uh, they do say you may need to adjust um, what the actual voltage is um, because it may not be accurate. So they recommend you use a battery meter so that you can sort of uh, adjust um, an offset on the voltage so that it is accurate. So the next step here is we're going to go to our logical switches <clears throat> and set those up. Okay, so here are my logical switches. Now these were uh, pre-existing from um, the former version of OpenTX that I was using. Uh, what you're going to want to do here is select logical switch number one, uh, A lower than uh, A less than X is fine. Now you're going to go in here. Now you'll now be able to find uh, your VFA, uh, VFAS. Wow, I got really lucky there scanning through there. Uh, your VFAS. So your VFAS value can now be set to um, the, the low point or what you want it to be warned at. So I believe I wanted mine to be 15.2. Uh, you're basically taking, you know, like 3.8 volts per cell times four, and uh, that's going to get you your 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 voltage that you want to be warned about while flying. 15.2. Okay. So now um, I'm also now we can exit. I'm also going to do a. Um, I'm also going to do a critical battery alarm here, but you can see um, in the next page here, so that gives you the general sense of the logical switches. In the next screen here, you can see in the special functions, special function one is using logical switch one to play track low battery at 20 second intervals. Um, I also have a couple other logical switches, uh, sorry, excuse me, special functions in there to play sounds for 
um, a critical low battery, and I also have the signal low, which is for the RSSI. And the last little bonus here, this special function is so that you can use um, one of your pots here for volume. So if all you need to do is basically copy what I have here, and that will give you uh, volume control on that pot, up and down, just like a volume knob. And, um, and that's the S1 pot, as you can see. So I hope this helped you. Um, it took me a while to find this, and I'd like to thank uh, user Quadfather on, the, on one of the forums, because uh, that's, he's the guy that I actually found this info from. Also, coming up, I'm going to be doing a couple more videos. Uh, I'm going to do some range tests between the head play and the teleporter uh, V4 here. Um, there seems to be some issues, I think, with the range on the head play, but I'm not sure. But we're going to do a little test to figure it out. And lastly, um, for kids, I tested, I'm testing out this. C yes, it's the uh, tried and true SEMA X5. And what you'll see down here is there's actually a uh, all-in-one FPV camera that I purchased. It's about 70 bucks. Uh, you can find it pretty easily. And uh, it works with the head play. And um, I'm teaching my five-year-old daughter to fly. She's currently uh, doing pretty well flying line of sight. And uh, we're gonna get her in some goggles. So I'm gonna have that video up shortly. And so uh, I hope this was helpful. Please subscribe. I'm gonna have some more content up soon. Thanks.